Welcome everyone to GamerMeld. I didn't have a video planned for today, but I found this story, and it's a couple days old, but it's something I really think we want to discuss. Basically, we have some benchmarks on Intel's new 10 nanometer chips, and yes, they're ultra low power chips, but when we compare this chip to Intel's previous generation chip, it gives us an idea of what kind of performance increase we can expect to get with 10 nanometers. But first, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as MassDrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, so what are you waiting for? Start saving now by visiting the link in the description below. Okay, so let's get to it. As you can see here, Hot Hardware actually was able to get an Intel built system featuring one of their new 10 nanometer chips. Now, this isn't like a pre-release system or laptop or notebook or ultrabook or anything like that. This is actually a system built specifically by Intel for software development, but it gives us a somewhat decent idea of what we can expect as far as performance. Personally, I'd argue it's more than likely a best case scenario as well. So keep that in mind. This is really just a preliminary kind of article, a preliminary tests, and, but it does give us an idea, but it's not going to be perfect. And the scaling, there's a few different problems whenever we discuss Ultrabook versus going up to the desktop chips and trying to compare, but I'll go over those as we go through it. As far as the test systems are comparing this new Intel AIO, and actually there's two different configurations. You have the 15 watt and 25 watt, but I'll get into that in a second. Then it compares it to the 3700U and Intel's last generation 8565U. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the benchmarks. As you can see here, we have Cinebench R20, and this is a pretty good synthetic benchmark for single and multi-threaded workloads. You can pretty quickly see that the i7 is separated between the 15 watt and 25 watt variant. Then we have the 3700U and last generation 8565U. Now, right off the bat, you might be wondering what the wattage is of the 8565U, and that's more or less a decent question, but I'll get to why it's not that important in a second. Obviously, we have a 15 watt version here and a 25 watt version here. Now, the best information that I could get from this is actually in a comment. If I go down below, you can see that the author writes that it is technically a 15 watt uh, CPU, but it will boost up into the 20s. Of course, it still is basically a 15 watt CPU. I mean, most 15 watts can go a little bit higher. I do know that this particular CPU does have a 15 watt and 25 watt version. So obviously, in this case, it's the 15 watt. So that's the one that we're going to want to compare it to. So keeping that in mind, you can see that the 8565U got 1172 in the multi-threaded benchmark, while the 10 nanometer 15 watt version got 1264, and this is really the one that I do think we should be comparing it to. And that scores basically about 8% higher. Now, obviously that isn't amazing, but it, it's, it's not horrible. I don't know. It's really nowhere near as much as I was hoping for. If we move up to the 25 watt version, things get way different. We're talking 40, 45% increase. but Personally, I think that we should really be comparing this to the single threaded workload. And the reason why is actually because for one, this is going to show us the difference in IPC. Plus, we know that Intel's clocks haven't really gone up from last generation. Instead, they've actually kind of gone down. So an IPC increase is really the main thing that we're going to be looking at here. Also, if you look right here between the 15 watt and 25 watt, they're pretty much the same. And the reason for that is because it doesn't need any more wattage to get a higher single core score. The reason that there's a higher multi-threaded score is just because it has more wattage that can add higher clocks to more cores and keep it at that clock for longer. So when we compare single threaded performance, it increased by about 17%. Now, compare that to third gen Ryzen. And going from the 2700X to the 3700X, it increased by about 16%. So what this tells us is that going from Intel's 14 nanometer plus 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 to 10 nanometers is about the same performance as you get going from AMD's 12 nanometer process to their 7. And this actually isn't that great because if we then go up to multi-threaded workloads, the 9700K is still below the 2700X. And if its only performance difference is going to be about the same as the 2700X to 3700X. It'll likely still be under where AMD is right now, at least in multi-threaded workloads, of course, certain things like gaming, and that can change as they use more cores, but as it stands right now, in gaming, it will do even better, more than likely. But the issue is that in multi-threaded workloads where AMD is really good, it may even do under where AMD is now. And since 10 nanometers is going to be releasing next year, that's going to be really bad because AMD is likely going to be in 7 nanometers plus by then. So they're going to be doing even better. 
Now, when we move over, they actually did have a good bit more benchmarks, and we, we do kind of see this play out around 16-17% a good bit through this. But as we go down to the physics score, things start getting a little wonky. You can see that the 8565U is actually beating the 15 watt. Now, this could be a little bit higher than 15 watts. And of course, the 25 watt does extremely well. But once again, this is more multi 30 workload, so it's going to be really hard to compare because the wattage actually is really, really important here. But if we're comparing the 15 watt, man, the old one actually beats the new 15 watt CPU. And then whenever we go down here, it once again beats it. And once again here, it's really odd. It's really odd. Maybe this allows it to have more headroom and wattage. I'm really not sure. But at the same time, it's really not looking good for Intel. I mean, yes, 16, 17% increase is great. But this is something that would have been amazing a few years ago. This is the same kind of thing whenever we look at AMD, what they did with Vega. They actually released a very powerful GPU, but it was only a little bit better than a GPU that we'd had for a good while by then. Had they released it, say, a year or so earlier, it would have been amazing. But as it stands, when they released it, it just wasn't. Now, luckily, AMD does seem to be getting better with that with the 5700 and 5700 XT. But in this case, this is Intel basically doing the same thing. They should have released this years ago when we expected it. Basically, at the end of the day, and I know I did a lot of rambling here, but I just think that this shows us this isn't going to be a giant jump like some were hoping. It's going to be a decent one, and it's going to put Intel back on track at being fairly good at certain things. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to completely own or dominate AMD like some were thinking. Instead, I think it's going to continue the way it was. AMD will keep being the king of multi-threaded performance, while Intel will remain great at single-core and even quad-core performance applications. Ultimately, there's quite a bit more benchmarks in the article, and I'll have that linked in the description below. But while I was honestly excited for 10 nanometers at first, I wasn't all that impressed by these preliminary benchmarks. Once again, though, these are just that, preliminary. So wait before making any final judgments. Anyway, while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Are you excited for 10 nanometers, or are you just ready for 7 nanometers plus? Let me know down in the comments below. And really quickly, before I go, for those who may not have noticed, this is the Open Test Bench, or excuse me, this is my new test bench. It's called the Open Bench Table. Really cool story. Um, I was actually going on their website to buy one because it seemed like it really fit well for what I needed. It's compact, really easy to move things around, looks really sweet, if you can tell, and ended up sending them an email because on their website it showed that they... Uh, they were completely out, unfortunately. So I emailed them. They got back to me pretty quickly. Actually ended up sending me one. I love it. I'm not trying. They're not a sponsor or anything like that. Just kind of wanted to point that out. It's something that's really cool for people who are constantly testing components, to which I will say that this is going to be in videos where I'm testing stuff and I'm actually working on some things right now. So you're going to see this pretty soon. But I just kind of wanted to give them a shout out. Really love it. Works really well for what I needed. Anyway, if you liked the video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, that's fine. Either way, thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day. What, what, what is this? Why, I'm, you, you have a great day. You, you, have it, bye. <laughs>